Melisande. In the kingdom called Coons, where curses came before boons, there was born a beautiful princess to the kind king and the queen. They lovingly named her Melisande. She had long, lustrous hair of pure gold on her tiny head and had eyes of a kind soul. The king and the queen were happy for their stars, and as they talked about the christening of Princess Melisande, but they decided not to invite any fairies. Well, some fairy is going to be left out and will be angry and offended. If we don't call any fairies, then nobody is angry. Or they all are. And that is exactly what happened. The next day, 30 to 40 fairies swarmed the palace. How could you not invite us? This is unacceptable. I say that the princess shall be bald. And I say that the princess shall be... Enough! Not one word against my daughter. All the fairies were shocked. How can you all be so thoughtless? How do you think fairies came to be? The only ones who are generous and kind become fairies. It's not the wings and wand and glitter that makes a fairy. It's love and pure heart. The fairies realized their mistake. Malevola and all the fairies apologized and left with their heads hanging low in embarrassment. But the damage was done. The beautiful, lustrous hair on the head of the princess was gone. The king and the queen were pained thinking about their daughter's difficult fate. <laughs> Melisande had a tough childhood. She was always stared at and people gossiped about her. Father, is it my fault that I have no hair? Does that make me any less beautiful? <sighs> Beauty is more than how we look, my dear. Whether you are big, small, with or without hair, people will always have something to talk about. But as long as you love yourself and show kindness to those around you, no one can stand in your way. The princess grew up with these wise words and learned to love herself. She loved her bald head and also the silk bonnets and caps the queen brought her to protect her head under the sun. The kingdom, as rightfully explained by the king, was never happy with the princess. One fine day in the attic of the royal palace. Ah, the princess needs a spell for her hair. Our king is intelligent. He will surely think of something. He must. Her hair needs a more advanced spell, like... I wish that Princess Melisan wakes up with golden hair a yard long and that it would grow an inch every day and grow twice as fast every time it was cut. The king, queen, the nurses were all shocked to see the princess. She had golden hair, which was a yard long from her head. Wait, the spell gifted to me by my fairy godmother on my wedding is missing. 
Did any one of you go to the attic and use that spell? Tell me at once. The nurses stepped ahead and told the truth. They apologized, but the king was already busy calculating the mathematical storm. The long, lustrous, golden hair of the princess that grew one inch every day became the talk of the kingdom. Nah, it's just gold. The princess should either have hair of diamonds or no hair at all. The princess, on the other hand, was finding it difficult each day to take care of her hair. Each morning, as the princess sat for breakfast, her hair first engaged one chair at the dining hall, then two, then three, and then all the ten. Soon, there was a maze of thick golden hair inside the palace. Whoa! Ow! Princess Melisande demanded magical scissors to snip her troubling magical hair. The king sighed and asked for magical scissors from his godmother. As the magical scissors arrived, the princess grabbed them at once. Magical scissors, magical scissors, the one that cuts only magical hair. Please take all these locks away and lift me up from my despair. And voila, the princess had lost all her hair again. Phew. But Melisande's relief was short-lived, as the hair began to grow twice the length she had, and then grow twice as much each day. It became every night ritual in the palace. Each night, the princess would snip all her hair, and in the morning, she would have double the hair growing with twice the speed than before. The princess was shifted into another room, and every morning, she had to be rescued from her own hair. One such night, the princess was sitting by the window, disheartened by her fate. <laughs> and she heard a tiny whisper. Princess Melisande. Huh? I am Prince Florizel from the East. I have heard about your unique problem, and I have a solution to it. Prince Florizel told Princess Melisande that he would meet the king the other day with a solution in his hands. Meanwhile, he insisted that she doesn't sleep and call out to him first thing in the morning with the magical scissors. I have nothing to lose to give you an opportunity. You sound kind, Prince. I will surely do as you suggest. The prince and the princess talked all night long. And the next morning... Prince, they are growing back. Prince Florizel asked the princess to come down the window and stand on the ground as he climbed up. As the hair was cut, surprisingly, it wasn't growing back. Yay! Hey! Woohoo! Yay! Woohoo! How did you do that? I didn't cut the hair of Princess. I just cut the princess off her hair. Brilliant! Bravo! Bravo. Prince, Prince Florizel! Oh, Prince, you should not have done that. The mathematician king was right. You see, now that the princess was cut off her hair, Whoa. the hair stopped growing, but the spell reversed, and now the princess was growing. Uh-oh. What have I done? Whoa! Father! Help! The king, thinking ahead, took the princess out into the garden. The princess grew six feet, 
then 9 feet, then 12 feet, then 15. Is she ever going to stop growing? Well, she would start with growing exactly how long her hair was when she cut off it, and then twice as fast. So, the answer is no, but her speed of growing will certainly reduce. The kingdom was in panic. Finally, as Melisande's growth slowed down, she looked down at her parents, her beloved kingdom, and the man she had begun to like so dearly. <laughs> oh, your highness, I am so sorry. You were just trying to help. Son, I understand. I shall write to the godmother right now and ask for a solution. Your highness, could you please request fairy godmother to send a million magical scissors? The king agreed and left. It would take another week for the fairy godmother to send the reply and the scissors. Meanwhile, Princess stopped crying and decided to help the kingdom in any way she could. If the sun was too bright, she would sit down, casting her enormous shadow covering the entire kingdom. Ooh, we are lucky to have her. Yeah, but you know I liked it more when her hair grew rather than her. We had so much gold then. Then one night. Princess, I've got a surprise for you. Look down. The magical scissors? Get ready to swim, princess. The spell was set, and as soon as princess's hair was cut, she began to reduce in size. Mother! Father! Eh, now we are going to feel hot under the sun again. It was smart to melt the million magical scissors and make an enormous one, Prince. But we are back to the same problem. The princess is back, but her hair is now growing again. Not for long, your highness. Fairy Godmother has sent a letter too. And she wrote just one word, scales. Your highness, please arrange for a large weighing scale and I will meet you at the large oak tree in the middle of the garden tomorrow morning. And so it was done. An enormous weighing scale was brought and the princess was made to sit on one side and her constantly growing hair was kept on another. Now all I have to do is use the magical scissors right when the scales hit the middle mark. I will say the spell for snipping the hair and hold on to the last word for the right time. The kingdom of Coons held its breath. They have seen their princess without hair, with unstoppable hair, and as an enormous giant. What else was left to see? Magical scissors, magical scissors, the one that snip only magical hair. Snip off two yards more than the exact mark and lift the princess forever from her despair. And whoosh, most amount of the hair was gone. Prince Florizel, neither am I growing nor my hair. Bravo, you did it. Neither did you let the princess off her hair nor you snip the hair off her. Look, the spell is confused. You broke the spell. Yay, Yay Prince Florizel. What? No more golden hair? I liked her when her hair kept growing. Princess, your beautiful golden hair is now right to your ankle. It's perfect. Prince Florizel, your kindness and intelligence has won my heart. I wish to spend my life with you, but my hair shall fall soon, since it was given to me by a spell that died. I love myself the way I am, 
And I hope you accept me for the same too. Melisande, your faith in yourself and love for your people is what brought me here. There's nothing beyond that I would love more. The King of Coons held a celebration for her brave daughter and the intelligent prince, and in that party, Melisande walked in with neither the golden hair nor the silk bonnet, for she knew that the only voice that mattered was her own and of those who loved her. The kingdom of Coons rejoiced with their brave princess, and they all vowed to accept themselves and everyone around exactly as they are. Well, which wasn't easy for everybody. Eh, the princess was better when she was tall. 